we are looking at uh, chapter 21, where there's prayer for revival, something that we touched on in uh, um, the previous chapter, while we said we must pray for cities and nations. So what are some ways in which we can pray for revival? Remember I said identification. We pray as if we made the mistake, right? Though we haven't. It's just a way of praying with the burden, uh, you know, carrying the burden. So usually when we read about revivals in uh, history, church history, many of them prayed prayers of repentance on behalf of the city. You know, they cried out to God and they said, God, you know, forgive, forgive this city. Uh, so prayers of repentance, consecration, yielding, surrender, those are the kind of prayers we need to pray in order to see revival. Okay. Um, we know there are people in history, Evan Roberts, uh, you will study about revivals later, so I'm not going deep into it, but Evan Re uh, Roberts was associated with the Welsh revival. One of his famous lines was, Lord, bend me, B-E-N-D, bend, Lord, bend me. So in their language at that time, it simply meant bend me means, you know, you're surrendering yourself into God's hands for God to do anything. Like God, bend me, change me, we sing, right? Mold me, make me. So that is the prayer he prayed. And then, you know, the Welsh revival happened. When people went to God and repented, surrendered themselves. So today, we want revival for all the cities and the nations. How to pray? Pray submission, surrender, yielding, repentance on behalf of the nation. Second Chronicles 7.14, if my people who are called by my name, if they, you would humble yourselves and pray, turn from your wicked ways. So what is that? Repentance. We repent before God. Then I will hear from heaven and I will heal your land. So pray prayers of repentance. Next, we can pray for um, more of God, a greater outpouring of the Spirit of God. When we read about the early church in the book of Acts, there was a great work of the Holy Spirit. Do you agree with me? Yeah. So it started in Acts 2 with the outpouring of the Spirit, the uh, manifestation of the gifts of the Spirit. But that was not all. They continued to gather together. They prayed together. And you read things like great grace was upon them. Many miracles, signs, wonders were done through the hands of the apostles. Wherever they went, whether it was a volunteer, you had volunteers like Stephen, Philip, wherever they went, Miracles were taking place, right? Uh, God's power was being demonstrated wherever the apostles went, a Peter and a Paul and a John. Mighty things were happening. So if it could happen when those people prayed and asked God, today when we pray for revival, we are saying, God, yes, we are very happy. You know, when we experience God's presence, we get so excited and we say, wow, if it is this good, we want more. So just imagine. If we have that hunger for the work of God, the power of God for our city and say, God, thank you for whatever we have seen so far, but we want more. Do something new. Pour out your spirit. Let the gifts be released. Right? Uh, let miracles take place in people's lives. Supernatural things, let it take place. Uh, God is able to do it. So that's how we pray for revival. And we say, God, let your outpouring of your Holy Spirit and the work of your Holy Spirit in Zechariah 10, 1, uh, God's word says that God has promised the latter rain. Rain is um, sort of the understanding is the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. That God will send the latter rain in its time. And we are living in the time when God is pouring out his spirit. So we should desire, isn't it? We must desire and say, God... This is the time of the latter rain, Zechariah 10, 1. Pour it out. Pour it out on our city. So this is how we pray for revival. We can pray for more of the glory and the power of God. You know, when the early apostles, they were being persecuted, 
they prayed a very bold prayer in acts chapter 4 they say god look on their threats or the persecutors what they are doing to us just see that but give us more boldness they didn't say god hide us protect us we want to run away those were not the prayers they said god you give us more boldness let more wonders signs you know miracles be done in the name of your son jesus christ you see the way they are expecting god's glory so are we in a tough time we should desire more of god's glory isn't it so that's how we pray when we pray for revival say god more manifestation of your glory and power the word of god says that his glory will fill the earth as the waters cover the sea how do the waters cover the sea it's full so god's glory should be full in our city in our nation everywhere we go righteousness uh, you know power of god truth peace let it all be there in our city and we can pray for that and pray for the salvation of the lost in many of the revivals you will see that people pray for those who don't know christ and they say lord so many people don't they don't know see in nineveh what did god say these people don't know their right hand from the left meaning they are so uh, they ignorant they don't know they are lost they are not saved why is there so much crime so many wrong things going on mainly because they are not saved they don't have the renewed born again spirit for the holy spirit to, to you know lead them for them to receive the word so we say lord first and foremost let people be saved right so we begin to pray for the lost and there comes your spiritual warfare as well and pray for the transformation of the community so um isaiah 26 verse 9 it's a very beautiful verse it says um i'll i'll just read the last part of it for when your judgments are in the earth the inhabitants of the world will learn righteousness when your judgments are on the earth your inhabitants the inhabitants will learn righteousness so we are asking god god as you touch this city let there be a change you know sometimes cities are known for bad things oh if you you know people say don't go to that city there's a lot of uh, you know mugging be careful don't go to this city uh, there there is you know women are not safe in this city how sad isn't it but when we pray for revival we can ask for transformation what is transformation there's a change in the city yeah revival is god visiting the city but as a result of that revival there'll be a change like i'll just give you one small example i told you about evan roberts welsh revival when you read about that revival you'll see that revival came many people gathered in prayer and all that in the city what was the result it seems the crime rate came down so much that the police had no job so the government what they did is okay we already have all these policemen they don't have any work let's use them for crowd control for these spiritual meetings so they use them as crowd control and in fact it seems there was no like hardly any crimes so some of the police also joined the choir i'm not making this up it's all there in uh, the literature about the welsh revival because there were no crimes only so what is this transformation right uh, so apparently people used to use uh, like uh, bad language you know cuss words uh, when there were there were people who had horses and to you know um, um, move those horses they would use the, the bad language but once revival came in wales apparently people's language got cleaned up like nobody was speaking bad language not nobody at least the people who were you know working with these horses they were not using those words anymore so it seems horses 
forgot they were trained in a different way and now horses were not they were not able to uh, use them because the language had completely changed what is all this transformation crime rate comes down the city is safer uh, there's better infrastructure uh, people's uh, livelihoods improve health improves facilities are better what is all this that is called transformation it's not just oh everyone is praying that's good that's a starting point but from there many social things many things change in a city that's what we want the positive changes so pray for transformation of the city and exercise kingdom authority and dominion remember we said we carry the authority right so use it what are we waiting for use your authority for your city okay so that's how we will pray for revival so there are um, two stories here uh, chapter 23 uh, i have already briefly touched on these chapters to uh, you know all of you remember i mentioned father nash okay he's part of uh, uh, charles finney's ministry and uh, he was a prayer warrior charles finney would have his meetings in the second great awakening uh, but before he goes into towns for about 2 to 3 weeks father nash would go there and prepare the place in prayer so that's how it was all working out um and in one particular meeting apparently there were people who threatened finney and they said that uh, we'll see you know how this man is going to preach but apparently when the meeting started those were the people who came and responded to the altar call and said tell us how we can be saved so can you imagine can you imagine these are all incredible things if we saw things like this today we'll be amazed like wow what is happening but it is said that this kind of a outcome in the ministry was possibly because of the prayer that went in through father nash okay also this is not something we are saying finney himself after father nash died he shared i believe that um, um uh, you know he went back to preaching he did not have these results so he left the evangelistic ministry can you believe it he left the evangelistic ministry and he became more of a pastor in a local church towards the end of his um, you know ministry life because the results which he used to see when nash was alive it was no longer there so he himself said that the result why was why what was it so uh, you know what was the power which we were experiencing it was because of the prayers of nash so you see how you know prayers prayers for revival prayers for transformation that dedication to prayer on behalf of some people made such a huge difference and when nash was buried uh, they had written Okay, wait. Where is that? Huh? They they write on the tombstone, right? They write something with the name. So they have written Daniel Nash, laborer with Finney, mighty in prayer. That's all about him. Mighty in prayer. That's the description on his tombstone. Um. Yeah, and he died quite young, I think. Oh. anyway so he did not uh, really live to you know full life uh, next person mentioned here is john hyde john hyde is uh, somebody from uh, the early 1900s and he's associated with the sialkot revival in punjab and uh, when you read about him you know you would see that he used to organize prayer meetings he had in fact invited people to repent he gave them some questions and told them you know ask yourselves these questions are you praying for quickening in your own life in the life of your fellow workers and in the church are you longing for the greater power of the holy spirit in your own life and work and are you convinced that you cannot go on without this power so basically he was very hungry for god to work 
and he wanted others to be hungry he gave them all these questions and said okay answer these questions and please everyone show up we are going to gather in prayer and so these prayers went on and we read about you know the powerful manifestation of god uh, in in those meetings and god ministered people used to even you know travel in prayer remember the intense uh, seeking after god those kind of experiences people had and uh, also you know later on we read so it made a huge impact in a nation at that time okay the holy spirit was poured out and many things uh, you you would read about the ministry of uh, john hyde uh, and apparently you know he he died he died uh, and he had to be taken back and buried in his own nation america but uh, his ministry in india is very very significant john hyde some people call him praying hyde you would have heard about him praying hyde so they say that you know he used to lie down on the floor he would lie down prostrate uh, prostrate and then he would just pray 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 he apparently he prayed so much that when the doctors examined him back in uh, america they found that his heart had moved from the left to the right you know so that's what they say that he was engaging so much in prayer and intensity of prayer uh, and and that's the kind of person he was he had a heart cry so one of the the statements uh, which is spoken about him is he would pray that father give me these souls or i die can you see the intensity so that's the intensity with which he used to pray and uh, when we read about revival no wonder revivals came right there were people who meant what they were saying and they were even willing to uh, you know uh, what do you say like it was not easy very sacrificial they were willing to make the sacrifices so such are the stories of people who stood uh, for revival and prayed for revival so let's back up a little bit i know today the vehicle is reversing and moving forward a bit too much but don't get distracted we are talking about prayer come to uh chapter number 19 nobody is feeling dizzy no okay <laughs> yeah okay chapter number 19 it simply talks about praying together and the uh, power of praying together can somebody read matthew 18 verses 18 through 20 very very familiar passage matthew 18 18 through 20 please use the mic Assuredly I say to you whatever you bind in, on earth will be bound in heaven and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven again I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven okay so what is the essence of the scripture prayer of agreement yields results how many people do you need to agree 1 million two or three or is it only two how many ever possible okay what is the minimum minimum two is that a practical number can we do that any two people agreeing very easy no any two people very much it's possible and what uh, can you read that again uh, vimal if you don't mind please 19 again i say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask it will be done for them by my father in heaven so any two of you on earth if you agree touching one thing meaning there is unity unity of what not just presence unity of heart we agree together yes this is the right thing we have to ask god for this thing when you agree in prayer then 
what does god say touching one thing meaning you're in agreement god will do it for us my father will do it for you so you only need minimum two people and that is possible okay uh, that's why sometimes we say okay come pray in twos how does it make a difference we're shifting into prayer of agreement we have a scripture and verse for that jesus said if any two of you uh, agree touching one thing i will do it for you right so prayer of agreement uh, and you know this kind of prayer can happen in the church it can happen anywhere maybe somebody calls us usually right for us as pastors we keep getting these calls and pastor this is happening that is happening immediately one of the things which we can do is we say okay wait let's pray together let's agree together then there is a promise jesus said i'll do it for you we agree together yes lord we declare healing over this person in the name of jesus we declare an open door in the name of jesus and miracles happen testimonies come how is it happening very simple we are extending our faith my faith that person's faith let's agree together and god's word says two people if you agree it will happen so uh, and th- which is why you know we also say that one of the advantages like when people uh, get married and you marry like a believer is see even husband and wife just two people you agree in prayer it's very powerful very very powerful okay uh, and so that is that is the power of agreement uh, there are prayers like i told us it would be good uh, for the city wide church to pray for the city the nation wide church to pray for the nation however even if two people stand in agreement you can move right you can move mountains uh, you can uh, see the manifestation of god's promises so we must utilize why are we learning all this use it use your faith together with another person who believes maybe a brother in a church or some sister say okay come let's pray let's ask god together or maybe a child you know with a child you agree together and you know you you receive it so okay anyway i have a small testimony um, it's uh, it, it might sound very silly to you but uh, my niece okay, when she was just about two and a half maybe three years old uh, i wanted to teach her about prayer of agreement so she came in uh, they came to visit us my sister and my niece and as soon as she came in she was very upset because there was a lollipop in her bag and it was missing so the whole time she's like my lollipop my lollipop so i was like okay you know what we can ask god how about we ask god for your lollipop so she's like okay fine so we agreed in the name of jesus lord father we ask you wherever this lollipop is you give it to us we are extending our faith in jesus name so i told her do you believe god can help you get it back she's like yeah okay so that's it we prayed we finished it i also forgot about it later she came running because apparently when they had opened the gate somewhere in the corner of the gate it had fallen so she came running with that one lollipop and she said we prayed and we got it right so today whenever i you know i talk to her she's a little older than that uh, if there's any problem we say how about we pray together right so you see it's not about the age two people do you believe did you agree pray in the name of jesus and you just begin to see miracles taking place it's as sim- it's not simple it's as powerful as that right so agree in prayer with people even when we have the prayer time here don't take it lightly it's it's not uh, something we are doing oh yeah we have to do supernatural hour don't do it for that sake there is a meaning there is power in all these things even in the bible we see 120 people gathered in the upper room remember they prayed together and then what happened the holy spirit was poured out on them and also when you keep studying uh, in the book of acts around acts 12 you know that was a difficult time when people were living uh, there was this king called king agrippa one um, he is the grandson of herod the great herod the great ruled uh, when jesus was born uh, but this time it was herod agrippa one who was ruling and you know a lot of persecution was going on even at this time so in acts 12 we read that one of the church leaders you know one of the james is he is killed second 
they capture peter they put him in the prison you know what the church people did at that time the bible shows us that in acts 12 uh, verses 5 and verse 12 i'll i'll just quickly um read it for us acts 12 was 5 and then was 12 5 peter was therefore kept in prison but constant prayer was offered to god for him by the church see they agreed together god peter is in the prison but we are agreeing let him be delivered let him be delivered so they prayed they prayed in fact they had a prayer meeting in somebody's house verse 12 So when he had considered this, he came to the house of Mary, the mother of G- John, whose surname was Mark, where many were gathered together praying. So that night, something supernatural happened. God sent an angel to the prison, and Peter was brought out of the prison in the night. Peter only really didn't know if this is reality or is this am I dreaming? But when he came out and he stood where the angel had led him. he could hear many people praying so all the believers were actually praying for him no wonder god sent an angel so you see the power there when believers gather together agreement minimum two but maximum any number we pray together supernatural things happen in this case god sent an angel right so this is how we understand you know many things that god is able to do uh, in prayer in the book of acts you see that repeated they were present in one accord one accord what is one accord oneness of heart oneness of heart so if you're all believing yes lord this is what your word says uh, you know uh, let your kingdom come here in my city that that is one accord you can expect got to move okay so pray together with people prayer of unity prayer of agreement prayer played a huge role in the early church they all agreed in prayer and god did marvelous things in their lives so you know let's remember that so small group prayer one of the simple practical tips is it's good to have some prayer point okay because then you can focus your attention on that point and pray now if we don't have a prayer point if you all come together we just praying everyone's praying some somewhere we miss out the focus but if we have a singular thought okay we are praying for healing of so and so we are praying for the city we are praying for right something god to speak to us then we can all focus that's the reason we say okay better you write down the prayer points then we all agree together maybe one person can raise their voice and pray others can agree but also sometimes everyone prays together right loudly uh that's also fine because you see that in the book of acts all of them were praying together uh, about one particular matter so you can pray whichever way but usually prayer points help because then your focus is guided you know people don't take off on tangents so that's a little bit about praying together in groups okay so since the train express train is moving fast we'll go to the next station this is uh, chapter 20 if you have any questions any thoughts please stop me that should be fine the next class i want to dedicate it to fasting that's the reason you know we can take the entire 2 hours for fasting i will study about that so uh, that's the reason i'm you know touching on this quickly so any questions please stop me okay all right so uh how important is this kind of praying together and uh, worshiping the lord together you know today in the world you see many such movements there are many movements one very maybe you could say noticeable movements because there are movements but we probably don't know about some because they it has been written about or they are not using technology to to share it but a noticeable one is uh, you would recognize i hop kansas city i hop okay international house of prayer where they have this um 
prayer and intercession model where they pray continuously continuous so it seems it started in 1999 and is going on till today so they have different batches of people some who pray in the daytime some they are called uh, you know night watch uh, night watchers so some people are appointed only for night time intercession and worship so even now like if you look up some of their youtube channels and you know, prayer will be going on 24 bar 7 24 bar 7 prayer worship intercession okay how did i mean what is the biblical basis for something like this and how is it useful to pray continuously you know to pray uh, in the day and the night well when god instituted the tabernacle you all know tabernacle the place where uh, um, you know moses and the people like they were supposed to look at that as the place where god would descend god's presence would dwell there god gave an instruction you know in leviticus uh, 6 13 um he said the fire shall always be burning on the altar fire should be burning on the altar it should, you should not put it off fire should continuously be burning on the altar so even in the tabernacle the same thing was instituted right the lamp in the tabernacle how often does it burn god told don't switch it off in the times of samuel you remember it used to be switched off that's actually wrong eli they would go switch off the the lamp you can't do that according to what god instituted you know as far as um, uh, that that fire is concerned he said let it not be switched off it should continue it should continue to burn so taking from there um okay one second uh, my apologies uh, the reference it's um the the fire of the tabernacle uh, is the inner court so that also should not go off but today uh, what we will discuss is the fire of the brazen altar brazen altar is outside it's the outer court okay we're talking about the outer court where the sacrifice is made okay so that fire uh, is, is what it is but that fire is what is taken and to light the the lamp of the inner court okay the menorah whatever you light it in the uh, inner court but the first fire comes when you give the sacrifice Okay, so that's the fire of the brazen altar. So that is what we are referring to. So that fire will come when the sacrifice is there, isn't it? So uh, sacrifices should continue and God will provide that fire for the sacrifice to be consumed. So one should not stop giving sacrifices to God. That way, the fire also will you know stay on and that fire is also taken in for your uh, inner coat where it burns continuously so what is this concept the concept is when you look at that fire uh, we are talking about you know, prayers to god we are talking about worship unto the lord which should not cease which should not stop okay so somebody in the old uh, covenant, uh, that is David, David loved God so much that he decided he is going to give God this kind of worship, non-stop. Okay, not just non-stop, but excellent worship. So you read about this in um, First Chronicles 15 verses 1 through 17 and then verse 27. I will not go deep into it because we are going to talk about this in other courses also but understand that this particular method of worship prayer and intercession was first introduced by david you know in 1000 bc he introduced it what did he do he had a tabernacle tabernacle is a tent so he had a tent of worship what did they do in the tent of worship he had excellent he's a king so he can pick the best vocalists in his kingdom best musicians he picked the best so when you read that passage you will you will recognize 
uh, in first chronicles 15 it says something like he appointed 288 prophetic singers 4000 musicians to minister before the lord to make petition to give thanks and to praise the lord day and night can you imagine 288 prophetic singers and then when you read about it you also see there were uh, there were guides or there were senior musicians senior prophetic singers who used to work with all these juniors so how can one keep praying like this for 24 by 7 only if they have teams so it's likely that they organize themselves in such a way that you know different people okay you pray to us next team come next next but we noticed that he brought the best of the best it was not just okay we need to do worship ah, let's do something but he did an excellent worship unto the lord and you know this carried on for uh, yes, some decades and when david instituted we call it the tabernacle of david the okay? tabernacle of david when he instituted the tabernacle of david or this kind of 24 bar 7 worship he started having victory in different ways you know military victory uh, many things started happening in in his land and similarly many other kings also followed david's example and they did not stop this kind of david's tabernacle worship these kings were solomon jehoshaphat you remember no wonder he sent people singers he sent singers because they knew the value of worship and when praise and worship you know was instituted even jehoshaphat saw a lot of victories so every king at least seven kings they continued this kind of excellent orderly extravagant worship prayer intercession to the lord and they saw many victories in their lives okay so what is special about david's uh, tabernacle god through the prophet amos prophesied okay, in amos chapter 9 he prophesied and he said verse 11 amos 9 11 on that day i will raise up the tabernacle of david which has fallen down and repair its damages i will raise up its ruins and rebuild it as in the days of old so god has spoken prophetically that in our times he is going to do what rebuild the tabernacle of david the same way excellent worship orderly worship extravagant worship it'll happen it's again going to happen that is prophecy in god's word i will rebuild the tabernacle of david so no wonder a word over your sea people where did they get this you know the the fire on the altar should not go out so there are people who have established continuous continuous worship day and night worship unto the lord because god promised in his word before his second coming the tabernacle of david will be rebuilt even in the book of acts you know james the leader of the church he quotes this and he says look don't you remember in acts 15 he says the promise which god gave through his prophet and said he will rebuild the tabernacle of david so that is why in many different generations you hear of such things you know continuously people are praying worshiping uh, honoring god and experiencing his presence what is the result all the mighty impact okay uh, one of the results is you read verse 12 amos 9 i'll read verse 12 and 13 says that they may possess the remnant of edom and all the gentiles who are called by my name says the lord who does this thing 13 behold the days are coming says the lord when the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes is him who sows seed the mountain shall drip with sweet wine and all the hills shall flow with it so simply simply put what god is saying is there will come days when i will rebuild 
the tabernacle of David, result will be the Gentiles shall come. Or what he's saying, when this kind of praise, worship, intercession, prayer rises up to heaven, people who don't know God, so Gentiles is a term used for those who are outside of the covenant. Many people will come to know God. God's kingdom will be extended. Right? So, we are going to see such things take place where God will rebuild, you know, prayer, intercession, uh, worship, and nations, people in nations, uh, people in regions, cities will just come to know God. And we'll wonder how is it happening? But there is a prophetic promise. He says, when you raise up this kind of worship, okay, I will do it. The Gentiles will come. The Gentiles will come. So you know, we have some churches, they have this kind of prayer and worship going on. Can we see an impact on the city? Yes, we can. We are going by the scripture, isn't it? Because God said, I will rebuild the tabernacle of David. It shows God was impressed. He could have said, I will rebuild, you know, somebody else's worship. So many people worship the Lord along. But why only the tabernacle of David? Because he gave God his best. So tabernacle of David is equivalent to, he did his best. God, your best singers, best musicians, 24 bar 7, continuous. He even paid them. And he told them, you just do this. Don't do anything else. Raise worship to the Lord. Intercession, prophetic. And it is said that many of the Psalms which we have in, in the Bible are from this time because they needed songs. They needed to write songs to sing 24 bar 7. So songs came out of the tabernacle of David. Okay, And um, in history, we do see there are people who have practiced you know, this form of intercession. One is uh, in 480, there was a monk, a monk by the name of Alexander Achimetes. You know, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, yeah, yeah, 5 verse 17, it says, pray without ceasing. So you know what this monk did? He found like a cave kind of a place. He went there near the Black Sea. He took some people with him and he told them, we will follow the exhortation of Paul. We will pray without ceasing. And they started praying, 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 day and night, day and night, day and night, they started praying. So this is one of those, uh, you know, relatable uh, sort of practices. In fact, they were known as the Alexander and the sleepless ones because they never stopped praying. Day and night, they used to pray. Okay, So that is one example. Moravians. I told you about Moravians. 100 years. Isn't it? They, uh, there was a, a prayer chain, I told you, uh, 24 hours prayer chain. So it started like that, but the prayer chain did not stop for 100 years. Okay, So that we also call it as the Moravian revival. So why am I talking here? Because day and night, day and night they were interceding. What is the result? They say that a missionary movement came out of the Moravian revival. Before that, it seems... One missionary used to be available for 5,000 people. But after the Moravian revival, one missionary per 60 people. Because so many missionaries started going out. And God, you see, when we pray, worship, seek God, God does the work. So there was a huge missionary movement. Even people like William Carey, they are uh, impacted by the Moravian prayer revival. Okay. So uh, that's an example. Uh, you all know about Yonggi Cho, right? Yonggi Cho, David Yonggi Cho. In Korea, uh, Seoul, Korea, they have something known as a prayer mountain. So people go there, 24 bar 7 prayer is going on. For many years, it's still going on. You know, there's a prayer going on there. Something similar. The concept is like Tabernacle of David, 24 bar 7. And uh, Dr. Cho talks about the impact of such prayer on uh, the city as well as the nation. Um, yeah, an international uh, house of prayer, Kansas City, 
one is that they they have you know prayer going on 24 by 7 many ministries are born out of it for example they have food distribution discipleship program health clinic food and clothing for children um, they have adopt a block program orphan justice center crisis response international so so many projects uh, helping victims of human trafficking so many things have actually resulted from praying like this okay so i just want us to understand that god globally is rebuilding the tabernacle of david what is the result gentiles will come okay and many um, ministries will grow out of this place of prayer praise worship and intercession all right so um yeah with that i think time is up so we will do fasting the next class and hopefully we'll complete it that way you have time for your exams all right so thank you everyone you can stand up stretch a little <laughs> yeah thank you and uh, i'll see you in the next class thank you everyone online as well god bless you thank you for connecting week after week and uh, really hope that you're being blessed by these sessions god bless have a wonderful day